Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Kerbal. We are on the surface of the moon, right about over here. This is where Valentina Kerman's spacecraft has landed. And before we get out and do some moonwalking, which of course we intend to do, let's collect all our science data. 48 science for the barometer, even though we're in vacuum for some reason. Still worth a lot of science. 32 for the temperature reading. 20 for the crew report. Hundred for the science bay. It's a ton. It's a ton of science. Alright. Now it's EVA. Welcome to the moon, Valentina. It's a nice and slow fall. So here we are. We have landed on the moon. And we are now walking on its surface. Unfortunately, because I don't have the proper upgrades yet, I can't actually take a uh, surface sample. I can't take an EVA report, though, so let's do that. What spot is this? This is... hang on, let me... Let me review the report. We're on the Midlands, okay. Look at her. Time of her life. Who can blame her, right? Okay. Uh, there's not really much to do. Unlike, you know, in the real... Uh, the real the real uh, lunar landing where they spent, you know, hours walking around outside and picking up rocks and bringing them home. Here it's literally a right click of a button, a collect surface sample button that we don't have yet. Also, a planting the flag button, which we should do. Uh, it's reversed. Whatever. We're going to name this the... What are we going to name this? Oh, let's just... Let's go uncreative. I'm going to call this Valentina's Descent. Think of something inspirational, man. Think of something inspirational. I can't. It's fine. I wasn't really prepared for this moment. The first time, obviously, I was... I was awestruck when I managed to land on the moon, and I still am. This is never going to feel... There, there is just so much satisfaction in being able to say that, man, I did this. I landed on the moon the first time. Keep in mind, I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I just kind of threw a bunch of spacecrafts together based on what I saw in you know, documentary films about moon landings. And when I finally managed to pull this off, Oh man, I, honestly one of the best gaming moments of my life, really. Anyway, uh, enough fun and games for now because the hard part is about to start. Before I, before I do that though, hang on, let's just, let's just jump once while I'm on the moon, look at that. Walking around in 1-6 gravity, oops, that's fine. Can I jump back up there? I can. All right, oops, I meant to push out. It's fine, just, oh crap. Also, before I forget, it's a good point actually, before we get back in, I do want to, let's turn off the EVA propellant, I do want to collect all our science data. So let's start with this one. Collect data, that's fine. And then let's jump up there. Jump, grab on, okay. Let's collect this one, take the data from there, take the data from there, and then let's get on board. Now, next stage. We're going to have to orbit with Orion 2 again. We're going to have to do this on less than half a tank of fuel remaining. Okay, which direction is that thing pointing? It's uh, not perfectly eastward direction. Okay. Quick save. <laughs> and let's go. Okay. 
also seeing now that we're not pointing to the wrong side of that line over there. nervous about our fuel. Very nervous about it. Escape velocity is relatively low, so it should be fine. And we're not working against an atmosphere either, but our fuel level is dropping way too fast. Yeah. Well, truth be told, this mission was pretty much doomed from the start. Luckily, though, I do have a plan. Crazy plan, but a plan nonetheless. This is actually going to work out in our favor, I think, because we're on, a, on an orbital path lower than, than Orion 2 is, and we should just pass it. I mean, it should, it's the, this, these vectors should converge together. Let's see. A couple more passes, yeah. All right. I'm just going to tell you what my plan is, by the way. Um, since we're already in orbit, and the, the ship is not in any danger of crashing back into the lunar surface. That means that we can technically send a spacecraft out there to, to, to rescue them. Again, we're in that very lucky position where uh, it doesn't actually matter if you know they're stranded out in space for a while. I did... You know, that's another thing I've... Uh, there is a, a pretty good modding scene for this game, too. To, I'm sure literally nobody's surprise. I think I actually want to... I want to speed us up prograde at this case. No, I don't. If I go retrograde, the problem is and it brings us closer to the surface of the moon. I'll just... We'll just do another circle. It's fine. I can send a vessel out there to collect them. The thing is, I don't have any pilots left. So I'd have to hire a new one. Fortunately, I think all the completed contracts that we uh, managed to succeed in is going to 
reward us with plenty of credits. How much do we have? Oh yeah, it's just easy. Bringing these guys back would be all the better. Okay, I'm gonna slow us down again. Okay, get ready for a prograde burn. One point seven kilometer separation. That's fine. We're up here. Seventy units of fuel left. I mean, well, sixty and seventy oxidizer. The two run out pretty much exactly at the same time. Mm. Yeah, this is definitely not making it. You know, it might make it back to Kerbin orbit. Probably won't make it back to Kerbin's surface. But we'll see. Again, this is all just because I couldn't transfer fuel. This wouldn't even be an issue if, if I could have done that. And it probably wouldn't even have been an issue if I had not been an idiot and, uh, you know, didn't keep the crossfeed enabled. Burn through all our reserves. All right, one minute out. Switch to target. And this actually, the good news is I think we can pretty much just keep this corrected with our uh, with our monopropellant thrusters. Not even going to have to use fuel for this. Oh yeah, easy. Because we have lots of monopropellant fuel left. Switch over here. There's the lander. Let's go ahead and turn towards it. There. Oops, no, 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 no. Not what I wanted to do. Might as well, though. Speed time up a bit. We are coming in pretty slowly. Align us. There. Now pretty much I think we can just let nature do its work. So again, we're doing this on the dark side. There we go. Okay. So that part's done. Now also, just out of curiosity, I'm going to see... How far ahead we can get using nothing but the monopropellant thrusters. Uh, that's actually pretty fast. Wow. This might actually save us. Yeah, let's. I'm, I'm gonna do this. It's, this is, uh, you know, making a long job even longer, but. Rendezvous station. It just kind of assumes that any docking maneuver that I perform out there is like, yeah, building a station. 
it's not entirely true, but you know. All right. So I'm just gonna do this again, and I'm gonna I'm gonna accelerate. Can I speed up? I can't. Okay. Ship is technically under acceleration. So I'm gonna burn through all our mono propellant. Just to see if we can still use those 60 units of fuel to get us back home. It's not impossible. It's just very unlikely. It's, this, this is, you know, reasons like this, events like this. This is an adventure, man. This is a freaking adventure. I love this game so much. I can't begin to tell you just how much I love this game. It encourages creative problem solving. You know, one of my favorite scenes from the Tom Hanks uh, Apollo 13 movie is it's the scene where um, I'm not entirely sure what the, the technical specifics were, but the point was that they had to somehow get. Uh, I believe gases from one container to another that were completely incompatible with each other. And so the team of uh, NASA engineers back on Earth had to find a way that the astronauts could solve their problem using nothing but the items that they had up there. So then the, the engineers, they, they put like a pile of stuff, all of the stuff that the astronauts have up there with them. And then he picks up two completely incompatible looking parts and he's like, all right, gentlemen, we need to find a way to get this to fit into this using nothing but these. The best part of the whole movie. Not entirely, but it's definitely one of my favorite parts. Just because, again, this is, this is kind of what I'm doing right now. I, I put myself in a stupid situation because I was an idiot, and now I have very limited resources to try and fix it. I should have been using the monopropellant earlier, I think, because it's going to make a big difference while we're out here around the moon. Not so much when we're out there around Kerbin. But we did manage to get back into Kerbin orbit using nothing but the monopropellant fuel. So, I mean, it's a start. Now, I'm gonna wait till we get far away enough from the moon, maybe do an entire circle around Kerbin. This is day seven, by the way, of our, of our moon mission. Oh, shoot, that's okay. I actually prefer if you turn retrograde now. All right. And let's burn. Yeah. It's actually going down fairly quickly. This, my sudden realization that I have monopropellant fuel on my spaceship might end up saving this mission. Our last quick save was on the surface of the... Uh, was on the surface. I'm, I'm going to do another one here, because this is again, this is another situation where you know, if if the astronauts are stuck out here, I can bring them home. I can make a ship to bring them home. Hire another pilot. All that stuff. funny thing, of course, is that there is an actual record right now of me, you know, saying that this is entirely hopeless. I might even be able to get back into Kerbin Atmosphere using nothing but the monopropellant. Uh, no. No, probably not. It's close, though. If I hadn't ditched the, uh, the fuel canisters that I, uh, on the other craft, then I would have had more monopropellant fuel. It's fine, though. I'm actually almost almost certain that we're going to get back home now. If our monopropellant fuel takes us below 2 million meters, then then it's pretty much guaranteed, I think doesn't look like it's going to... No, it might. It might even get us close to one million. 
And no. No, it won't. I'm looking at the rate at which we're descending. You gotta admit, this is pretty awesome, though. I mean, I'm holding down a button and watching a periapsis meter go down slowly, but... Yeah. Okay, there goes all our monopropellant. Now, still pointed at the retrograde direction. I'm gonna start to slowly burn fuel. Hang on. That's wrong. We're controlling from here, aren't we? There we go. <clears throat> okay. Alright. Burning 0.8 fuel per second. It's nice and easy. Maybe a bit quicker. <clears throat> out of things to say in the meantime, by the way. It's... And none of that it does it. No, no, none of that matters. Uh, the, the orbital path we're taking is going to put us on another encounter with the moon, but it doesn't matter. Look at that. Look at that. We're almost there. <laughs> Unbelievable. And again, if I had not used the monopropellant fuel, then this would not be possible. Because we got out of lunar orbit and uh, got almost below 2 million meters periapsis with Kerbin solely on the, on the monopropellant fuel. And we're actually still going to have enough fuel to slow us down when we get close to periapsis. This is pretty neat. Alright, 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 here we go. Okay. Now, I want us to go roughly around 40,000 meters. We have a quick save, so we can revert back if things get too bad. We don't want to come in too steep, especially not this time, because uh, you remember how many times we burned up an atmosphere previously. Then if we go straight down, it's really going to suck. I think this might be fine. Okay, now... The final thing that we have to do before we commit to this is we're going to have to get... Uh, where is Valentina? Valentina's still in the lander can, isn't she? Now, we can't transfer her. We're actually going to have to... Actually going to have to EVA her because, to my knowledge, there is no, way, no other way to get the uh, science data that we have out of there. Although, I just got... I just had another idea. Hang on. Well, I think we already did that in high Earth orbit, high Kerbin orbit. We did all these experiments. I could get our scientist out to reset the materials bay, but I don't think it's important. No, no, it's fine. Let's just... Let's just... Oops. Let's just get on into the pod. Okay. And now there's nothing else to do but pray for the best. I'm not going to quick save. I almost did, but I don't think... All, right. All the science data we collected is in here. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, we got stored data is in there. Now, 
They only have to survive re-entry. literally all we have to do. We're going to be coming in extremely fast. And this is going to be very, very scary. Two hundred thousand, hundred thousand. It's hundred seventy. Now it's a hundred thousand. Okay, slip us retrograde again. Still controlling from here, I think. Good. The lunar module, landing module, is going to burn up in the atmosphere. There's nothing we can do about that. I'll use whatever is left of this fuel to slow us down. Got about 20 seconds of burn left, a bit less. Use that to slow us down as much as possible. And there we go. Okay. Now we undock this. That automatically flipped retrograde. That's perfect. Say goodbye to the lunar landing module because this is the last we'll see of her. She's going to burn up in the atmosphere as it heads back down. And hopefully, we will not reach the same fate. Okay. It's about to start. Roughly 300 meters per second speed. This is going to be extremely terrifying, I promise. Bye, lunar landing module. See you later. Not. All right. Here it comes. Pull this retrograde, Valentina, as long as you can. Is the engine dying for some reason? But we're not speeding up anymore. Let's... That's the burn I was talking about. Very nervous right now. And I don't think I don't think we're slowing down fast enough. Fortunately, we're not dropping too fast either, but parts of the ship are starting to overheat. Don't think I've ever actually seen a heat shield decrease that much before. Oh my, is that the crew cabin? I think that's the crew cabin. Unfortunately, it seems to have stopped at a point. What's, what, what happened? Something happened there for a second. It was weird. Anyway, we're still flying roughly horizontally, which is good. It's going to help kill off a lot of our speed. We're still at 30,000 meters, so there's, there's plenty of room to go. Valentina is somehow managing to hold us at retrograde. We haven't flipped over yet. Overheating bars have gone away. I'm very thankful for that. And it looks like it's going to be fine. We're not slowing down too quickly, but we're also not dropping too quickly either. And again, I'm not sure how much of this you can see. I mean, the flames, obviously, but... For instance, I personally can't at all see where we are. It looks like the landing is going to be on dry land. Come on, guys. Bits of the lunar landing module still floating out from space. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear it dissipating. I can... Yep, 
Look at that. We're in total darkness, but I think I think we did it. We have. We've done it. Oh my gosh. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting until the parachute can be deployed and gently floating back down to the surface. Can even now uh, keep the retrograde on. If we flip over, then we'll start to speed up again. There we go. The shoots deployed. We're good. We are good. We brought them home. Oh my god. That that honestly, I, that should not have happened. I mean, so much on this on this voyage it should never have happened. Uh, I should have I should have been uh, much more vigilant about you know fuel consumption leaving on the uh, the cross feed like that I, I still don't understand why I wasn't able to transfer fuel that would have made this entire thing moot in you know completely wouldn't have had to worry about anything that we've been worrying about but at the end of the day I mean we were put in a bad situation. Very little resources. There was a, a, a huge temptation on my part to just abandon the whole thing and start over. But we stuck with it. We persevered. And in the end, our reward is that we brought three people back from the surface. Well, one per person back from the surface of the moon. We brought three people back from a successful lunar landing mission with a ton of science, a ton of credits, and an extremely satisfying feeling. One, you know, final jolt of all of our nerves as the heat shield exploded from the impact, but the astronauts themselves are fine. I'm gonna use the SAS to stop this roll because I want to. I want to recover the. Can I? Can I please? There we go. Okay. We're good. We've done it. I can't honestly think of a higher note on which to end this episode, and, well, there you go, 348 science. But, you know, in the words of Emmett Seaborn, the science and the rewards that we brought down, that we got from going to the moon, are far outweighed by just the act of going there in the first place. Anyway, that was paraphrasing, by the way. I can't remember his exact words. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this was an adventure. And let's hope for more of these. It's what makes this game so much fun. I'll see you in the next Daily Kerbal. Bye-bye.